All right, welcome everyone to the Hadley Select Board meeting of May 3rd. I'm going to call the meeting to order. And we, uh, as a first order of business, we do have a consent agenda. So on the consent agenda, we have the minutes from March 1st for approval. We have four warrants, uh, 44, 44S, 43, and 45. We have approval for a cost estimator proposal for the Senior Center, um, which is A.M. Fogarty, and approval for the cost estimator for the fire substation, which is PMNC estimating. Uh, let's see, Route 9 widening project 2021. Um, there is a non-participating letter request for water and sewer lines replacement. Clarifier project, uh, approval of the contract documents and clarifier project notice of no change orders without select board prior approval. And then the last warrant article for FY 2017, a notice that that will be July 19th, 2017. Okay. I'll second that, but I, I would like the, uh, the letter that we're sending out, or just an explanation regarding the DPW letter that we're sending out. The Route 9 non-participation yes, yes, letter? Yes, please. Okay, so motion made and seconded for discussion. Um, there's a question on the Route 9 non-participation agreement. Uh, Marlo or David, do you want to speak to that? Right. So Just we went clarification. To the meeting a week or so ago, where they were talking mainly about bus routes, um, but uh, they also uh, gave us an update on the Route 9 project uh, in 2021. That's the next. Uh, improvement for the widening from the approximately Middle Street. And it was supposed to go to East Street, but they seem to have extended the project all the way to South Maple Street. Uh, anyways, we were advised at that time that if we wanted to um, have the same partnership with Mass Highway as we did with the Route 9 widening here, whereby we uh, concurrently with their project, we would be replacing infrastructure, water, sewer, storm, etc. Uh, that uh, that we should get our letter into Mass DOT requesting this now, sooner rather than later. I think is the words yeah, I think that they said. Right. But the takeaway is it, it turned into from here to East Street to all the way to South Maple in one project. Mm -hmm. Non-participating agreement. Does that mean we won't be participating? No, it means we will be. Same as the last project, we'll be going through the project. We will be participating in getting our work done, but non-participating is the work will be bid separately, like ET and L bid our water work separately, even though Mass the, it was under Mass DOT's umbrella. So non-participating, I guess that that's how that. that yes. Yeah, so it's basically a, a ten dollar word meaning that we're going to be responsible for only our right. portion of the project, and that we're not going to be. Uh, part of the state project. We're not going to be counted within their financing or their legal purview or anything like that. Thanks for the clarification. Okay. I did have a change also um, in the sub fire station uh, proposal mm -hmm. on the estimator. Um, there was $25,000 allowed in that account. Uh, it came in at 20600 but it has now been also reduced to 17,800. That's correct. We've uh, we renegotiated some of the pricing. Mm -hmm. Both of them. Mm -hmm. On both of them. So one of them is at 1,700 and the other one is at uh, 17,000. And the other one's at 17,800. Mm -hmm. uh, and somewhere around here I have my notes. I have mine from my meeting the other night. So. Okay, so that's for the senior center and the substation. Right, mm -hmm. so yeah. the recommendation of both the committees is to award the the bid at the at the proposed price. Okay. Motion second in the board chair. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's it for the consent agenda. Um, we do have a posted public comment period. So is anyone here for public comment? No. Okay. Um, if not, then um, we have a fair amount of business to get done tonight and we'll probably be spending most of our time with the Finance Committee. Um, why don't we just, so uh, we can get some folks out of here, uh, the Fire Substation and the Senior Center updates. Jane, you want to go with the Senior Center? Thank you. 
picture. Um, we're very pleased with what we're getting so far. Here is our blueprint that we're working on, and these schematics are only shells. There's no design feature in these buildings. Please note that. But it's a general sense of how the layout will look. We're meeting with them again next Tuesday. We'll get fancy on the pictures. Mm -hmm. There's three different colors here, though, that because yeah, they've designed. not chosen it's any different. colors, yeah. they decided to show us three different colors. Yeah, that's why. So there's nothing, and it's not, you know, it's not pretty yet. It's shapes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just so you see. Conceptual. Right. The dining um, assembly area will be on the right. The entrance, mm -hmm. the office is off on that little building on the left, and then the rest of the building. Am I still correct? This is going to be on a slab. There is no basement, or that is there correct. a basement? It's on the slab. Okay, very good. I wasn't sure. Very good. So next steps, Jane? Next steps, we meet with the architect again next Tuesday, and we make it pretty on the outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. We talk about colors and materials, right? We talk about colors and materials and, you know, where the windows are and if we like the doors there or here or whatever But you else. still have to, with all that, I imagine it's the same as what we have to go through, is that you have to go through the historical. Oh, yes, I'm sure. So we have to do all that, too. We can pick and choose right now, but... Uh, well, and we're keeping that in mind. Yes. And so you'll have, um, you can have something at town meeting This tonight. is what I'm going to have at town meeting on bigger, bigger okay. sheets. So if anybody's at home and you're planning on coming to town meeting, stop by and see the folks from the senior center. There's an awful lot more work done than just Thank being you. shown to you. There was obviously oh, five different choices that were shown to us. Right. And floor plans and modifications to floor plans and everything. But this is what the committee has brought forward and that's what we're working on. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you want to do the fire substation? I could have brought in some schematics, but again, they're in the process of changing also. We didn't have any uh, colored renderings um, as Jane did. That's still going to be worked out for our next meeting. Uh, we did talk about uh, flood um, zoning uh, in the back of the building. That still has to be worked out also. Um, so, I mean, it is moving along, um, but we're just it's still in the process of uh, um, Mike met with the uh, fire department and put it out to them to see if they had any ideas. There was some change on the inner part of the, uh, the building itself um, where the place doors uh, on the outside so that it would be accessible from different areas. Um, the vestibule and coming in, um, having a, you know, uh, a window there so that people can go up to it too if they have questions from somebody that's in the dispatch area mm -hmm. and yet keeping that confined to privacy also. Um, but it's, it's moving along and we've got another meeting coming up where we'll have a little bit more uh, we're looking at uh, probably going before Planning Board and uh, Conservation Commission yet uh, towards the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Um, David, anything else we need to know about the fire substation project? Well, we did receive a letter from the uh, Hadley Historic Commission. Um, it's under review by Council. I was thinking that we would have a Council's response uh, uh, tonight, um, I did have a conversation with uh, Joel Bard just a few moments ago, um, and so we're still studying this issue, um, and I think that the council's uh, uh, letter is going to indicate, one, that there's a little, very little case law on this issue. It's a contested area of laws without any clear um, direction, and that there's a state judicial court uh, proceeding on this issue, which will clarify it, but it may take a year for that to happen. Okay. It may take a year for us to have a clarification on it. <coughs> uh, the, for the SJC to uh, make a ruling. So where does that put the project? Uh, well, let me get uh, the, the, the letter from Joel Bard to you so that we have all the nuances uh, and to make sure that, that uh, I've portrayed accurately what he was telling me. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, we proceed as as, uh, as the voters indicated we should, mm -hmm. and if we run into a roadblock, we run into a roadblock when we deal with it at that time. Because right, that's what I was, you know, basically going to ask you about that on the uh, twenty-one day appeal. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is what you're looking at, and somehow we needed it in writing. 
I guess my only question is how long has this letter been in existence and why hasn't the board been made privy to look at it? You have this letter in front of you. Um, 42617 is what it says on the letter. Mm -hmm. In your computer. I've never seen a hard copy. I, I don't use a computer. I, I think that that's, she, she apologized for the informality of her note. So I think we're seeing an, uh, a copy of the original here. You know, usually anything like that ends up in my mailbox right away. Okay. And this is the first I'm hearing of it right now. So it's something that we put on the agenda for tonight so that we would have an opportunity to talk about it. Uh, it should be in your package there. Uh, if it isn't, I'll make sure that you do have a copy of it. I didn't see it, and I looked through this, you know, really good this afternoon, so mm -hmm. I don't think it's in there. Okay. Well, it sounds like it was just an oversight then on when Jennifer copied the material. Right. We'll make sure that you have a copy of it. Okay. All right. So that is the update on the, the two building projects. Um, we do have some appointments coming in, so uh, we want to start with the Finance Committee. Start. Okay. So we have a joint meeting uh, tonight with the Finance Committee. And I believe the fi we were waiting on some conversation to occur with, with the Finance Committee on Monday night when you guys met. Um, and I think you have an update for us. There are some recommended changes to the budget. Okay. Uh, yes, so we have um, the one substantive change. I'm going to put my glasses on. There's no change. I don't think I see it. Is that we have added an additional amount of money to the fire department budget uh, to allow for one extra fireman to be hired. And that money came from? Uh, most of it came from OPEB and a little bit came from bits and pieces that came from various other budgets. And uh, David could elaborate on that exactly. Right. So I assume that as budgets were tweaked, there was some monies that became available. Right. So. 50,000 was deducted from OPEB and uh, 3,000 came from other other sources. Okay, but any if uh, any of the other sources was a departmental budget? No, there was, we increased meals tax by $3,000. So 3,000 is the meals tax line. Yeah. So just want to make sure, because if we were impacting any other departmental budget, we don't want them to find out about it on town meeting floor. So. Right, right. Yeah, yeah we are not. Okay. So. Um, as of earlier today, we voted on this now balanced budget, and we're presenting it to you guys. So we all set. So, so hotel questions? tax, that's the capital funding mechanism, isn't it? It's the meals tax. Meals tax last year came in at $315,000. But and capital, what the hotel tax is used for? That's the capital, just goes to general fund. Just general, general fund. Yeah. Okay. Any, any questions or comments yeah, for finance? I know as a board we voted to uh, retain 75000 in free cash. Mm -hmm. I certainly would rather this board vote to use that money instead of cutting money from OPEB. We've worked too hard the last four years and our uh, liability would be $9 million instead of 6.3. And if we're going to start reversing the game plan that uh, our financial advisor has given us mm -hmm. it's a sad day in town mm -hmm. you know we're really working hard at it and it's going down and that's keeping our bonding you know I know we voted as a board to retain 75,000 in free cash mm -hmm. but I think it would be much more important to protect that OPEB funding it's so if they I don't can. spend the OPEB funding till the fall so we can still prioritize yeah. it and utilize the money out of the free cash in the fall while we're still budgeting for it out of a finite system that we have of the OPEB. I completely yeah. agree with you that, you know, that we should earmark it uh, from something that we need to take it out of today. But I also think that if there's free cash available in the fall, then that's where we would and completely fund our, our OPEB money. I guess money the only that thing would. that scares me, uh, Selectman Devine, is we're hoping free cash really builds to a high figure and in my anticipation I don't think it's going to get that high you know there's a lot of things that are happening we're not going to get any money back from the budgets like we did before the school hasn't got any money to give us back and they even said the other night they're going to spend every dollar mm -hmm. to protect the integrity of their budget well and I think that's that's actually why the suggestion was made to 
to be specific and, and say it was OPEB. And um, if, if just to, to help with the conversation, um, our treasurer was, was present at the finance committee meeting. And um, this was a conversation that took place. And Linda, you know, again, not ideal, to your point, would prefer to fully fund OPEB, but recognizing that OPEB is a somewhat uh, nebulous target, and this was really kind of a program that we agreed to, but it's not an, a true obligation at this point. And to Jerry's point, because we wouldn't actually, she wouldn't actually be cutting the check into the, um, the investment account, so to speak, until the fall. So there's no, a non-cash impact here. Um, and the thought is that, you know, again, we're st we would still be putting $207,000 into OPEB. So it's not like we're, I, I, I agree with you. We're not, we're not abandoning it, it. We're not no, abandoning it at all. And hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll be able to fund back to the 257. That's the priority mm -hmm. of the Finance Committee that in the fall, whatever monies become available, will backfill OPEB first. We were concerned about this too. We asked her about it at the meeting the other night, and she she answered us satisfactorily. I wish I could have attended that meeting, but I had three meetings that night, and I chose the school committee. So, you know, but I caught the rest of your meeting on TV at home when I got home, and it was a very good meeting. You worked very hard that meeting when I saw you know and. Yeah. So we, you know, we're concerned also about maintaining that level of credit rating that is so beneficial to us. Sure. So we're concerned about it too. And, and I, we had to balance that against the safety of the town's people and buildings and the most of the people. Mm -hmm. um, we can't have a fire chief showing up to a fire by himself. <laughs> Thank you. He wouldn't want that either. <laughs> no, I live in this town. Right. So any, any I'd further? like to make a recommendation to support the Finance Committee's recommendation this evening. Okay. Motion made. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion or are we ready to? Uh, I just want to make one comment. Yep. I don't think that taking $50,000 from the OPEP budget at this point is going to do anything to our credit rating since we have over $2 million in our stabilization account. That's the big one that counts the most at this point for our, our double bond rating. So um, I think $50,000 until we can back fund it in the fall, I think, is a, is a good idea. Thank you. OK, motion made and seconded. All in favor of Aye. accepting Aye. the Finance Committee budget? Aye. Aye. OK, unanimous. I'm voting no. Oh, OK. And the reasoning why I'm not happy with this budget at all. You know, we've worked hard in the last two years we just can't keep taking free cash. I know how hard they work, and I don't consider it a balanced budget. I really don't, you know, and uh, that's the reason why I'm voting no, but at town meeting I will vote yes out of necessity to pay our bills. Okay. Um, and then for what it's worth, I was able to speak with um, our other select board member, uh, John Muscovitz, isn't um, able to be with us tonight, but he's aware of the recommendations that you made um, and he said that he was, you know, generally in support of that as well. So, again, he's not here to vote formally, but um, he understood what you've done and was kind of fine with it. Okay. All right. So we've done that. Now, do we have more warrant articles that need to be? No, you've uh, conducted all of your work on the warrant articles. Uh, we have the division of motions. We have CPA recommendations, capital recommendations, finance committee recommendations, select board recommendations. Planning Board took their public hearing last night on their three articles. You have a town meeting warrant that's ready to roll, rock and roll. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, in, in the past we've kind of started trying to have a few opening comments um, in advance of this budget discussion to let the town folks know <coughs> where we're at and what's going on. Um, I'm hoping we do the same thing again this year. And, you know, I think. Personally, I think that we need to set the stage for uh, the fall town meeting and just indicate that, you know, again, we're a very active finance committee right now and we're working very, continuing to work very hard um, on resolving some of the other needs of the town. And at this point right now, we have to honestly say that the revenues just aren't there. Um, you know, and that you no, know, we could be talking about revenue. We could be talking about um, revenue expansion in the fall. I think it's appropriate. Say it. Use the word. Say it. 
An override. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Yeah. But so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I know I think rather than ig ignoring it, I think it's appropriate for us to just again set the stage so that they don't. To Donald's point, this isn't a perfect budget that we would want it to be, um, and we we need to continue to work on those other issues. I mean, the fire department's been very clear that they need four people, not one. Joyce, so you've been in that chair for how long now? Fifteen years. Have you ever seen a perfect budget? <laughs> All right, quit planning on having one. It doesn't yeah, happen. No. And I never saw a perfect one for 15 years on the school committee either. So, yeah. okay. you, know, you know, things our just are not oh, perfect. I I didn't saw, mean to that's all right. I, I you know, you I've, I've been to enough town meetings where they've spent money all zero right down in stabilization to nothing because that's what they did back then. They didn't believe in bank accounts and they didn't, you know, they, they had the money there, they spent it. So the tide has changed. You know, the people in town have changed and the, the thinking has changed and it's um, all for the better. And I want to thank the Finance Committee for stepping up this year and uh, making things happen. It's been very appreciative. Yeah, very much. Done? I just wanted to comment uh, about our neighbors, Sunderland. They really did something unique. They passed supposedly a balanced budget contingent on an override passing. If the override doesn't pass, they're going to make massive cuts. So that's, we don't even want to tread on that water, you know, but this is how other towns are reacting to these budgetary woes, you know. Many towns are in much worse shape than we are. We're actually pretty good shape financially compared to most towns. So. Can you say that again, please, Donald? Apparently camera running. They passed. <laughs> uh, no, the part about being in good shape. <laughs> oh, I think we are. Okay. I think we are too. Okay. All right. So I just wanted to, to run that by you. So, David, you and I can work on a couple of talking points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just to say congratulations to everybody. This has been a long road. Uh, February 1st, I presented my budget. We've been working very hard in, to bring it to this point and you're all volunteers the select board and finance committee have put in many many hours in this and your care and concern for the future of the town the well-being of the people is evident in the decisions that you've made so congratulations you're here. here here we'll see what town meeting thinks about all of that <laughs> Please come 24 out. hours yeah. <laughs> One more comment, Madam Chair. yeah of course you know again I'm pleased with your work ethics it's going to take a Herculean uh, effort in 219 to solve our problems. But you're all very conscientious. It looks like you really want to get into this, and that really impresses me. That's the most important thing. We've got a team consensus here now to try to tackle 219. You know, so that makes me feel really good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I apologize. I'm just realizing that the clock on the wall is is stopped clock. on yeah. seven o'clock. No so, <laughs> 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 but my, so it's seven twenty three, and we did have a seven fifteen electricity aggregation public hearing scheduled. I'm not too worried that we've <coughs> anybody in the audience by not um, holding that. But are we ready to uh, open that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, nobody's here for it anyway. Uh, right. Were we expecting any company tonight, David? Uh, no, we gave uh, we've given everybody public notice that we're going to have a discussion about the uh, electricity aggregation program uh, that is being proposed for mm -hmm. the residents of the town of Hadley. Uh, just to remind everybody that we took a vote back in oh, 2005, I think it was, to enter into a, an aggregation program whereby the residents of the town would be benefit on their electricity bill for a, uh, for a reduction by combining all of their purchasing power rather than having single homeowners go out and get whatever market rate they can, combine all of Hadley uh, residences with residences from other towns and then make a group bid for electricity, which should result in a lower price for households. It's been a long time coming and uh, we are in a situation where we can authorize the bid for this project, but a public hearing for anybody who might be interested would be, uh, is necessary and that's what we're doing tonight. Okay, so um, does anybody have any uh, oral comments or written comments that they would like to turn over? 
relative to this program? I guess the only <laughs> comment I had, I'm a little disappointed with, with Mr. O'Rourke. When I asked him directly if he had anything to do with working for the COG, and he replied no to me. Mm -hmm. Now he's the same gentleman. I wish I could tell you in depth, but I can't by uh, executive session what's going on in the COG with this gentleman. Public record, we already paid him 16000 and he's asking for a lot more than that, which I can't talk about. But uh, outright he told me, no, he had no connection with them, and so I'm a little disappointed in that. Uh. Okay. So um, at this point, then, I think we can close the, the I hearing, I think you correct? can. Okay. So motion, motion to, to close the hearing. The second? Second. Okay. Motion made and second. And all in favor of closing the hearing? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then the next steps, David, so this marches forward from here, right? This marches forward and we go, we, uh, we submit the, uh, l the, the legal documents to the Department of Public Utilities. Once we get their approval, we go out to bid and the bid results will be brought back to the, to the select board. You can accept or not accept the bid results. Right, right. And okay. it's at that point that we go to the, to the citizens in the town of Hadley and offer this? Right, it's an opt-out program, so the citizens are automatically enrolled. So they should get an automatic discount if the prices come back. If they don't like it, they they will be given a 30-day notice prior to this program being implemented that they can opt out before the first uh, bill comes. Mm -hmm. and, just uh, and, the, and then they can opt out at any time without penalty. And just to reiterate, one of the reasons that we entered into this or tried to do this uh, program was because the citizens could quite potentially save about $100 a year off their uh, electric bill. Right. Okay. In, in some ways it's very similar to the municipal aggregation that we are already doing and have been doing for 10 years and we save something on the order of ten to twenty thousand dollars a year by aggregating our municipal uh, purchasing. Uh, so uh, now it's an opportunity to give to the to the residents something that we've been enjoying uh, in town hall for quite some time. Okay. All right. Um, so we do have another hearing scheduled around on the water and sewer rates for 7.30. We've got a few minutes before that, so I'm just noticing we have the privilege of having Karen Purley here in our audience. <laughs> Are you here for the electric? Look, right, I'm here about for the um, consultant, Larry Tuttle. And I just wanted to be here to answer any questions about um, the contract. I mean, the Municipal Building Committee submitted it to you. I just wanted to be here in case. Um, there Is there any questions? questions? On? Um, it's, we worked with the Municipal Building Committee um, and met with them a few times about mm -hmm. this project. Um, it, three years ago, the town voted to uh, replace the lighting, which involves replacing the electrical work um, um, tube and knob, um, and the ceiling would need to be replaced. So it was a bigger project um, from the beginning, and the CPA um, recommended to the town, the town voted, um, and we started moving forward with the scope of work and quickly found that um, the electrical work was going to be a lot more extensive because of the hallway switch plate also goes to the second floor <coughs> and we were not um, going to do anything in the second floor because we it's not open to the public. Um, so in the meantime the Missile Building Committee said they would help with the scope of work and they've gone through a few consultants um, so this is a new consultant that they're using um, and have put this contract together for him to do the scope of work so we know exactly how much it's going to cost. Right now we have about $83,000 um, to, to pay for this project, but we're not sure if that's enough. Mm -hmm. And the other it concern was the time <coughs> of, of this, if we needed to close the library um, and when will be the best time to do that. We don't, we're trying to go to the town if our grant comes through by October um, to ask for the town to fund the new library. Um, so we would prefer to wait till after that 
um, so there's no confusion of us uh, spending money on the, the building. It is a town building. It's going to be a town building. Um, so what we're expecting to do with the lighting is nothing library um, lighting. It is just to have better lighting, the um, balusters. We can't get some of the um, parts for it, so it's very dated. Um, so whoever uses the building in four or five years, if the new library is built, um, will need this new lighting. And that's why the Municipal Building Committee got involved, because to support, it, yeah. to, to support this and to, um, because the maintenance of that building in the future um, will be under their supervision rather than the library uh, trustees as stewards of the building. So we're working together on it. We need to explore <coughs> what it's going to cost and the timeline of it all. And then once we have that information, decide do we need more funding? Do, um, does the municipal building committee want to do this project? That type of thing. So it's to find out what it involves. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's in concert with what we heard from the uh, municipal building committee mm -hmm. as well. Right. And so this isn't a it. surprise. Yeah. Right. And it's it just something that, you know, was allocated three years ago when we put it on hold, especially with everything else that we've been working on. Um, and now, you know, at some point it needs to be done. What time, when, I don't know. It's, it's something that um, <coughs> we should explore. It has okay. to be designed anyways. Mm -hmm. Right, Most, so motion to enter into the um, designer services for the electrical service for the Memorial Library. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right. Any further discussion on this? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right. Did you already do 6.1? David. The liaisons? Liaison. David. Uh, no, we did not. Okay. Um, we're probably going to do that later, okay. but we, um, the select board has received the request, um, and I fully okay. expect that there'll be a, a, a change for you. Okay, all right, it's all, that's all I was just gonna okay. say. <laughs> if, if that was something that um, needed to be addressed. Okay. Yeah, I think, I, I think we have that. So. Right, all right, thank you everyone. All right, thank see you. you tomorrow tomorrow night. Thank you, yeah. Yes, see you tomorrow night. All right, so it's um, just after 7.30, so I, we can open the public hearing on, um, is water and sewer commissioners, um, we'll open the public hearing for water and sewer rates. Uh, water and sewer rates for those at home were la uh, water rates rather um, were last adjusted in 2007 and sewer rates were last adjusted in 2008 okay so uh, Marlo David who wants to yeah so you <clears throat> it's been a long time since we've adjusted those rates just a little bit of background when we adjusted the water rates in 2007 we were doing it in anticipation of the uh, debt service for the new uh, water treatment plant at the Callahan Wells. And uh, the promise of the uh, water commissioners at that time was to hold rates steady for a three-year period uh, and then start looking at the, the rates again. So from FY 2007 to 2010, you kept the rates steady. Um, and then when we uh, looked at the rates again, uh, for whatever reason, the, uh, the the select board did not act. At the uh, at the approximately the same time, the separate sewer commission uh, increased the sewer rates back in 2008, and then we combined water and sewer into a DPW uh, in 2009, uh, and that probably is the reason why we uh, we didn't uh, v revisit this issue as vigorously as we could. But basically, we're in a situation where costs have risen over the last 10 years. Our revenues have gone up and down based upon water usage and rainfall and, uh, and weather events. Um, but in general, the water and sewer revenues have been relatively stable. And so we're at a point where we're looking forward to the future of both enterprise funds and thinking about the long-term service solvency uh, of both enterprise funds, and it's time for us to address that by addressing the water and sewer rates. I think you have some recommendations for the board. Uh, yes, I sent out a package mm -hmm. about a week ago, I think. Um, so we reduced mountains and mountains of, of data and information down at the DPW down to the seven-page booklet that I handed out. Um, 
So the trend basically has been um, balancing the, the um, operating budget by using reserve funds at the end of the, the, um, the budget cycle. Um, I think we have somewhere around 223,000 left in sewer reserves and 423 in water reserves. Um, so to take off where, where David had mentioned, um, every year it's increasing costs um, for, for materials, uh, chemicals, um, wages, etc. So um, what I concluded when I put the package together was, was there's definitely a downward trend in our reserves. Um, so we, we put together uh, different rates here for water and sewer. Uh, we reached out to other communities around us. Um, we gave options in water to um, potentially drop the lower tier and, and add another tier. Um, my recommendation would be that if we do any, any sort of increase, um, that, that we do it across the board rather than move the tiers around. Um, so we were looking at uh, the baseline, uh, a 6.7% increase um, for the water rates and a 10% in the sewer rates um, would be my recommendation. Now, when you say 10%, it, so it sounds like a very large percentage. Um, but if you look at the what the increase is per residential home, um, it's about $40 a year, which would be $10 quarterly when we go to the quarterly building, uh, billing. For a home with water and sewer? Correct. Great. Correct. And, and, and then the water would water be, only. yeah, and the water would be about an $18.61 increase if you went with the 6.7%. So I guess what I'm saying is it would be about a $58 increase per year, but it'd be broken down quarterly for water and sewer if you had both with this 6.7 and the 10% respectively. Um, I added some others in here, some higher percentages. Um, <coughs> I think looking at the, the trend we've been on, I, I think this would be a, a, a real reasonable stop gap to slow down that trend <coughs> of taking out of reserves. Um, but we definitely would want to revisit our water sewer rates you know, yearly in our budget cycle. Um, I think it, it, would, it would be good to do that. Um, and again, none of these rates, uh, I, I didn't couple in any of the, the capital projects that we have you know, sitting or future capital projects. So um, I think those, those two rates that I mentioned here would be a good starting point. Um, that would be my recommendation. And then the meter charges are a separate issue, but they're related to this, and you're recommending that we keep the meter charges the same. Yes. And just divide them quarterly. Right. When we, go quarterly. we did a lot of homework when we reached out to other communities to understand what they're charging for meter charges, if they had impact fees in sewer, just the, the way we do it here, see what other communities do. It's very hard to compare apples to apples because most communities do it all a little differently. Um, it's a mountain of data to try and trudge through and get apples to apples. But um, we did the best we could with the three or four communities we, we reached out to. And um, it, as far as um, the meter charges, I think, were where we should be. Um, I don't see any need in, in raising them. But we do have to, the board does have to accept if we go to quarterly billing to break that charge that we have now mm -hmm. uh, semi-annually to the quarterly right. billing of that. So I provided a spreadsheet on that, too. It just breaks it down to quarterly as opposed to semi-annually. But taxpayers always look at things the exact same way. So what we asked you to do is to come back with some comparison information so that we could understand that everybody has water. I know they do it differently. But in the communities that are like communities that you were able to provide us with, Sunderland, Hatfield, and Deerfield, mm -hmm. um, Hatfield and Deerfield are higher in their rates at this, even with the increase that we're putting through. And I know that as you talk, different uh, systems that are in place, Sunderland uses above water ground, above water aquifer. Okay, so they're not, they're not uh, they don't have the below water and the pumping stations that we have to finance ourselves and the filtration systems that we uh, fund ourselves. So in, in comparison, uh, the average household cost in Hatfield is $375. Uh, the new rate anticipated in Hadley is going to be $344. So it's $30 cheaper. Mm -hmm. In Deerfield, um, they're currently paying $390, just a little north of what Sundle, of what. Hatfield is paying, so we're going to be about $50 less than the average bill in Deerfield. 
Sunderland, as I said before, has an above ground water system that doesn't pump or have a filtration system. Um, so their, their uh, price is still ballpark, uh, slightly less than what we're anticipating paying here. So in our analysis of other communities, we will be less expensive than like communities, even at the increase that you're putting through. Fair assumption? Yes. Okay. And then to add to that, the, the communities that we spoke with that you had mentioned, they're talking increases right now because they're in basically right, the same broken rates. under rates. So their uh, rates potentially could increase too. I don't want to wait another 10 years. I know that we made, made a commitment to the town when the filtration system went in. You know, nobody wanted perchlorate in town. Joyce and I were on the board when, when that happened and we needed a, a filtration system. The rates went up. But to the best of our ability or the best of this board's ability, it was kept for seven years at least above water. The last few years it's been, you know, kind of leaking a little bit, no pun intended. But uh, um, so I think that we made the commitment. But I think as if, if my right left-hand man was here, he'd say, you can't wait 10 years to adjust your bills. You have to do it on a slow and steady basis so that people can anticipate it and don't wait 10 years as we did or 11 years as we did here in order to go up. So when you talk about going up by 6 and 10%, and it sounds astronomical, especially in today's world. But the truth is, if it's gone up 6% in 10 years, that means less than a percent a year. It's a lot more palatable for people to, to take care of. So I appreciate the analysis. Does Sharon do this, a lot of this for you? Uh, Billy, it was, Sharon? It was three of us. Okay. That kind of put it all but yes, the, the water analysis, Sharon, uh, it's just that I'm running with, so I, absolutely. <laughs> well, thanks, that, that helps. Yeah. And, I, and I think, you know, even though you say 6.7%, it was better to say numbers, because people right. understand numbers better than they do percent. Mm -hmm. And if they understand it's going to be broken down into four quarters, you know, even that's a little bit easier to swallow than getting hit all at once on one bill with, with a certain amount. So, I, I thought that was important to get those figures uh -huh. mm -hmm. because ten percent is like wow. But if you break it down yeah. for what we're paying now, it, it's not as big a dollar effect as you think it might mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. You know, Hatfield's a tough town to compare with. They're very small systems. Mm -hmm and they're very adequate. Uh, I talked to Sean Barry, he's on the COG with me, he's chairman of the finance committee, and he says in the future they don't even know how they're gonna deal with it because they haven't been updating either of those systems. And so they're really behind the eight ball on everything, you know. I don't mind the water rates uh, being at the percentage that you propose. The 10% that you're putting on the sewer rate, I would like to see that reduced to five because of our sewer impact fees. We get an enormous amount of money in this town and our commercial district is having a tough enough time now. Our big box store is trying to compete with Amazon and I don't really want to put a heavier burden on them because they pay most of those impact fees through restaurants and everything else. And I think 5% would be adequate, not 10. I would lead, be like to be back after town meeting talking about sewer impact fees um, in a lengthy discussion as to how that helps or hurts uh, what, what's being done with that now. I know there's a lot of, we've received a lot of complaints in recent history. I know, Marlo, it's a bone of contention for, for your office uh, down there regarding the amount of money that uh, our sewer impact fees are costing to the new businesses that are coming to the town. Um, it seems like $35,000 for uh, sewer impact fee for a, uh, someone that's adding a bathroom to their current facility. I think we need to look at that again. So I, 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 I agree with you, Jerry, but also those sewer impact fees have brought in like a million and a half dollars. They have. That's how we've updated all our sewer lines. We've updated Clarifiers. our sewer plant. Without those impact fees, we've been in the same situation as that field. David? I don't want to eliminate them. Oops, David? Sorry. Yeah, just, uh, just for a point of information, the sewer impact fee, um, you can debate it or not, but it doesn't cover the operational costs. It's right. for capital costs only. Mm -hmm. it, it, the, the rates basically cover our operational needs. I think and, and building reserves, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think and of note, several years ago, Hatfields put sewer lines throughout all the town over there, which we don't have we over don't here have in Hatley. So. That, that's to their benefit over there. Now, what they've done with it since then, you know, they got a grant and stuff to do that. We didn't. Um, so they made out then, but they haven't. Not 
updated it or kept it up. So. Well, if it's Jerry's intention to postpone this till after town meeting, I would make a motion to continue this hearing till after town meeting for further discussion if he wants to get some discussion for impact fees and things of that nature instead of voting on it tonight. I'd like this to be able to cover our operational costs and that's what we're talking about tonight and, and I yeah. still want an impact fee. I just want it reviewed and kind of some analysis done to try to understand the needs of the of the sewer department as far as capital plans mm -hmm. going forward in the future, what we're anticipating. We got our clarifiers. Uh, we our substations have been our two major substations have been uh, redesigned in the last couple of years. I know we're still going to have other uh, things coming up. What we're talking about tonight is the operational expense on an annual basis uh, being covered by the ratepayers that we have, and that's all we're doing with these two increases, mm -hmm. unless I'm wrong. Correct. Right. That 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 can't be less than and that. We're slowing down taking money from reserves to to, to maintain that operational service. Right. Uh, impact fees is, is, is totally separate. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but that can only be used for, for capital uh, capital and infrastructure upgrade. You, you, you can't, the way we're set up, I don't believe we can use impact fees to, to put towards the operating budget. So the impact fees, I understand what you're saying, but it, it's a separate issue from what we're talking about here, how, how, they're, they're, how we can use them. Yeah, and I, and I think, Donald, I, I, I totally get, and I, yeah. I don't want to, be you know I mean, the route nine is the goose that laid the golden egg for the town of hadley and a lot of these commercial enterprises we do want to be sensitive but i i think the conversation to jerry's point really should be about those impact fees as opposed to this so I, i'm comfortable with the proposal here but it's been a long long time so. i'm just worried about the new scope of route nine in 21 they're going all the way to the malls now and they're we're going to be talking updating sewer water lines in those areas and it's going to be very very costly for the town and, and not to get too far off base from where we're at but as far as that that meeting that took place that was my immediate concern if they're going to go all the way from here to south mm -hmm. maple we got to look at all our water and sewer we have to design and engineer all of it find out you know where we're at with that infrastructure they're putting extra wide bike lanes and sidewalks and are they going to cover our existing infrastructure so we can't get to it so all them things come into play so uh, David and I had talked that we should be getting Mass DOT back in here and say yeah. hey let's tell the town here what you told us right because that that that's that's a, a huge cost yeah. just to design and figure out what we need to do between now and between yeah. here and there I should well, say. the other thing with these with by voting to to change these rates tonight we won't even see the impact of this until next year right won't it be correct Right. Yeah. So, I mean, delaying it, I mean, that's, you know, we lose a whole nother fiscal year. So. Okay. Motion? motion okay. Accept the fees as presented uh, across the board, uniform percentages across the board for water and sewer. And, uh, Second for discussion. And just to, to clarify the, uh, the motion, so that also includes adjusting the tiers for quarterly billing uh, and uh, adjusting the meter, meter charges, charges for quarterly billing. billing. Yes. To Donald's concern, I'm sorry, the second for discussion? Yep. To Donald's uh, question to you saying it's 10%, does 8% cover our cost? If we were to go up 8 this year and, and 2 next year, does that cover? Uh, where I came to the figures was it's estimated that we're going to be uh, adding another, uh, adding 123,000 to the, I guess, chargebacks. Um, so when we, we put this together, we were looking at if there's going to be an additional chargeback. Um, we we propose the rates to at least cover that to stop pulling out of re reserves and see where we could end up with the operating budget this year. So. Um, our chargeback is going up by 123,000. 61 and well, it's estimated 61 in water and 62 in sewer. We we can always decide to hold the rates a year later, but if we don't do it now, we're not going to get that revenue in, and then we could find ourselves in a slippery slope. We're not doing it. We're not going to get any revenue for another year. That's what I mean. So if you know, I'm I'm saying if we take a further decrease, then it's, again, it's we're just pushing this out, which is. I guess that leads me to ask another question now that you opened up the thing about chargebacks. Mm -hmm. These increases you're talking about, chargebacks, are at what percentage? 
Uh, I don't know the percentage. Well, that's one thing I'd like to know. I'd like to know how much is coming out of water and sewer and chargebacks that are being used to fed our free cash account so we can pay our operating budget in the future. I think the Finance Committee needs to know that. I think we need to know how much chargebacks are coming out of every department in this town to feed the free cash account, which we've got to get away from. I, I have dollar figures, but I don't have the percentage. Um, I'm sorry, when you're talking, are you, are you talking the year end? When, I, I, I just got confused when Donna was talking about free cash. At the end of the year, whatever's not expended in an operating budget moves to free cash. Except in the enterprise but in the fund, enterprise funds, in, no. in the enterprise fund, mon money that's left over goes back into the enterprise, enterprise. reserves. Yeah, okay. Right. So is that that what you're? Yeah, the same thing. Yeah. I just want to make sure that money's protected. It's easy to raise rates on everything, but if we have money that are in these enterprise funds, maybe we shouldn't be raising the rates like we are. I can understand if it's to, for operational expenses. I don't have a problem with that. Yes, but Jerry's thought about talking about impact fees at a later date is very important to me. Mm -hmm. I think he brought up a very good point. Yep, yep. we'll make sure that gets on a, an agenda. You know, because soon. I hate to see us losing businesses on Route 9 because it's going to be reflective in loss of revenues everywhere. Right. You know, so. Uh, it, is my, it was my intent as the director going forward to take a look at all the water sewer regulations as a whole. I mean, that's not to tip my hand on maybe a goals and objective for next year, but um, I, I think that's something we all need to do is take a look at the water sewer regulations and, mm -hmm. and, and get them updated because there's a lot of, a lot of language stuff um, at least that needs to be changed. But I, that may be a good time where we look at everything as a whole, um, clean sweep, so to speak. Okay. So. All right. so Jerry's question, do you think we could cut from 10% uh, to eight or no? Um, we can, but like I said, I, that, that's what I came up with the rate to offset the, the increase in administrative costs for this year. So in other words, uh, I'm trying to slow down because the reserves are, are so low now that um, once we run out of reserves and we can't, and we can't balance that operating. But very payment. specifically, what, how much more do you need to go up on the percentage in order to offset the, one, the money that we're taking out of reserves now to balance the budget? Is it the 10 percent? That the number that you no, need no, to? No, it's just slowing it down. I, I think it's higher, time. isn't it? It's a much higher number. Um, in the trend, with the information I was given by the accountant, in that trend, it's a much higher percentage. Okay. And so I have so presented can. a very low portion of that percentage um, to slow this down so that we can look at them yearly. Uh, we should look at them yearly and where we're at because the, the, the capital, I mean, excuse me, yeah, the, the uh, capital plan is, is, a living, is a living document that can change from year to year on us. So we just don't know uh, what can change in that as far as our needs. How is the quarterly billing going to affect you? There's got to be a cost. You know, there of uh, getting those readings and everything quarterly instead of every six months. Well, we're down to, um, I should know the, the number of this, say 80, 80 meters uh, that have been have, have not been swapped out. So um, our, our reading time is cut down to about a week or less, depending on what we run into. But we've also made a, a smaller change to help out um, the collector's office going to quarterly. Um, we're gonna. We have insight put on Sharon's computer, so we can load the gun, uh, load the gun down there. We can read during the day. She can download the data, and then now she can start running reports to prepare billing and all that. Um, so we've absorbed part of that. We want to absorb part of that, um, but the quarterly billing on our end um, it isn't going to affect us because th that was the intent of changing these meters out from, from day one. To now the eighty day. meters that you're referencing to, those are the ones you have to read manually. Uh, not electronically correct yeah some so we, I some thought we passed a bylaw that everybody had to be converted over by a certain date I don't know I wasn't, I wasn't do you recall uh, and I guess my question is why do we still have these 80 meters out there well we still have life to them and they're changing over well, as we they had 200 of them when I arrived and we've sent out uh, numerous letters uh, it's important to get them changed out we just have not heard back from 80 or so um, to swap them out to go. I'm pretty sure we took a vote at town meeting 
you know, that everybody had to be converted over by a certain date. Mm -hmm. right. But that's an ongoing project for your department, it's an correct? Project, correct? Yeah. So you've been whittling that down. Yeah, but if one is broken, you replace it with a meter that they're supposed to have. Yeah. But if it's a good meter and running, it doesn't get changed. Uh, well, no, events, no, we're, we're changing all the, the radio. That was part of the whole program. So that you can do a drive-by and read these things. The older style, you have to walk up to each house and plug it into the mm -hmm. box. Donald, um, are you even volunteering for a door-to-door -door campaign? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to figure <laughs> out why they're not being done in... You know, the reasoning behind it. I know that's probably a time element with help from your department, too. But are people adversely uh, affected, say they're not changing? And they don't want to get updated to the electronic ones? And they want them to be done manually because they're still running well? I, I don't know the answer to that, why they haven't called. I mean, everyone's received numerous letters to swap their meter out to the... Because to the there's a co cost to swap. How much does it cost to take an old one out and put a new one in? Your cost is right around $115 to $120. And that is uh, taken up by the homeowner? No. Oh, that's all part of our program. We're down to 80 meters. Mm -hmm. So then why wouldn't they change them if it doesn't cost them anything? Don't I have no idea. They're not calling. They're not responding to him. Uh, yeah. we, the most recent letter was, was, was a little more aggressive, but we just haven't heard from 80, somewhere around 80 customers. We have not heard from them. But we, we dropped from 200 to 80 in the year's time, which was... was Pretty good, not here. Yeah. Could we have town council draw up a letter, finding out that uh, stating maybe they have to convert or something? I don't want to pay town council to draw up a letter. Well, I know, but if we can't get yeah. these eighty people to adhere to the rules and they regulations still, of the town, still, we have to do something. They still have enough time to go after these people. I think. I, I think there's 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 other approaches we can take, but this other letter just went out like two months ago, so. Um, they're working on it. It's something we can definitely revisit. Motion on the floor. Okay. All right, so motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you for the work. And please thank your compadres down at uh, DPW who helped, and um, Sugawatsky too. Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right, appreciate it. Uh, Chapter 90, we. Were you here for chapter, say, 90 chapter 90 to DOT tenure contract? Yeah, let's send them home. Yeah. Okay. I get you over with Marla so you can go home. So you can go home. Thank you. What we'd like to do. Okay. Chapter 90. So, uh, David, is that you or Marla leading this discussion? Those both of us, I reckon. Well, okay. What we have to do is uh, we uh, receive uh, Chapter 90 money for roads and bridges uh, from the state every year. That uh, is somewhere in the neighborhood of $360,000, a million dollars, no, thousand, thousand. thousand. Three hundred and sixty-five. We've got a problem yeah. with the thousands lately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. The millions. I always have that decimal issue, don't I? <laughs> All that cutting you had to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so th for this fiscal year, we got three hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars based upon a two million dollars state transportation bond. Uh, so we uh, we uh, participate in this program on a ten-year basis. Our ten-year contract is almost up, and so now it's time for us to uh, renew. Then we have to renew the contract. Motion renew. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, Marlo. Good night, Marlo. <laughs> oh, before you go, quick update on Bay Road. I see it in the package in here. Yeah, you say they're starting on May 8th? Monday. Uh, Yes. Just I, so the public knows, it's on TV. Right now it's targeted to, to start May 8th. Don't um, hold your breath. I, I got a, an email back from Mayor, Mr. Baroneski, the senior bridge engineer, this afternoon, as a matter of fact. I think I forwarded it. But um, they're, they're, they're saying the 8th, which is Monday. Um, depending on how many heavy rains, thunderstorms we get. The, the only thing that's, that's holding them up at this point, or the only issue they could have is high water um, as they start to work on these piers. So Do you have any idea if the traffic patterns are going to change? 
when uh, they start? Or gonna, is it going to stay just like it is? They're going to stay just like it is, I believe, but once they switch over to do the other side, it'll change take that the and other flip side. it and we'll be on the other side. Yeah, and they said 16 weeks max? Yeah, that's what they originally said, something like that. Okay. Do you have any idea what side they're starting at? I would assume the way the they side, probably the side you know, that's very right. I haven't right seen now. it. I'm you assuming. haven't been across Bay Road Bridge? Not lately. Oh my goodness sakes. I it's looked the same day. for the last two years. Oh, across <laughs> there. No, no, no. I'm saying. <laughs> right. No, I've been over that, but I'm saying, you know where you go into the water department? Yeah. yeah. Are they going to concentrate in there and park their vehicles on that side? Or the other side. That's what I'm getting um, to. Actually, the, at, at SPS, the contractor, has reached out to me, and I've authorized them to stage some equipment on that small gravel drive mm -hmm. right there next to the, the water treatment plant. Um, but they've also asked if they, they could store some small pieces at our town yard. Um, the gentleman reached out to me today. I, I'm going to meet with him tomorrow. He's supposed to come by. I just need to get an idea where how much equipment he has because I might not be able to put it all there. But most of what they need to do is going to be staged right there at the bridge. Um, and I also made it clear to them that that field is off limits to be right. running around with equipment. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Down your throat. Yeah, so the then you say in the highway garage would be for additional permit. staging of equipment yeah, they that they a, only use periodically, they could run well, it back you know, and forth. Barriers, cones, and if they needed to keep a couple loads of stone there and keep an extra backhoe there or something, I, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with it if you know, the board yeah, does You can't harm the endangered species. <laughs> Correct. Good night, Marlo. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, next item we have on the agenda, so I think we just roll through these in it's order. Um, select board liaison appointments. So typically it's been the uh, pattern of the select board that after um, the election cycle we go back and we readdress the committee assignments, or the liaison assignments. So right now um, I am assigned to general government, which is basically town hall. Joyce is assigned to public safety. Uh, Jerry has Public Works and the Council on Aging. John has the Library, Park and Rec and Veterans Affairs. And Donald has uh, the School Department and Hadley Media. So one question is, um, is there a desire and a strong desire on anybody's part to change? Um, I want to stay with Marlo. <laughs> <laughs> and then there um, was a letter that was submitted by the library. Um, and John's not here tonight, but just concerned that you know, clearly if anybody's not able to make meetings or, or respond to the requests that are coming from the, the departments that we're liaison to, um, it's probably a good idea not to, not to retain that and, and have somebody who does have the time or the, the willingness to pick that up. So I think we do need to make a change, um, at least with the, with the library, um, and I don't no. know. Not the library. You don't mean library. Do you? Oh, the library. No, yeah, because yeah. right, because John hasn't been able to attend the trustee yeah. meetings and the like. Yeah. So I mean, I will volunteer to pick that up because I was on the building committee and have some contact with those folks anyway. Unless somebody else is dying to do it. That's what I thought. Okay, so I will pick up. Um, Thank you, Molly. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank you, Molly. That's what general right. government is. Everything yeah, I guess isn't so, it? Oh yeah. Uh, but any any concerns or. Uh, requests on the other assignments? I also do the Capital Planning Committee and Municipal Buildings Committee That's as right. well, so I have you, the four of them. Yeah, you've got a, a full plate as well. And Donald, Hadley Media and, and the school department have regularly scheduled meetings that mm -hmm. you're able to go to most of them. Hadley Media is calming down, so you know, it's not as many meetings. We're meeting uh, sometimes every week. But mm -hmm. now it's getting to be once a month, so okay. that's, oh, that's calming so, down. Yeah, that's getting but, better. You know, education is education. I just just keep that one. Okay. I enjoy doing that. All okay. right. Yeah. I'm doing ambulance and um, fire substation. Right. Plus, plus the police and fire. Yeah, so you want to keep those two. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right, so we'll just make that one change then, if that's okay with everybody. What that, does that leave John with? Veterans um, he Affairs. He will have okay. Park and Rec and Veterans Affairs. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah. Motion on to make changes. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we already did the substation. David Nexamp Solar Development Pilot Agreement. All right, so we have two articles on the warrant for the uh, solar pilot agreement for uh, installation that Nexamp Incorporated is installing. 
Let's be very clear of these properties. There's three of them on the table. The two that we're speaking of this evening are the Goulet properties next to the Walmart. The, the controversial, oh, yeah. right, the controversial one is the Eversource solar array, which is one megawatt, which they are proposing to put in at the uh, uh, intersection of Moody Bridge Road and South Maple Street. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we're not speaking of that this And evening. we are not speaking of that, nor is there an article on the warrant for that project. Okay, good. So the two projects that we are talking about collectively make five megawatts of solar fields uh, on the Goulet property next to the Hampshire Mall just off of South Maple Street. Uh, so and it'll be juxtaposed with the bike path? Is that by that plot of land? It'll Whoa. be what? what? <laughs> one, is, one is down where they were hey, going hey. to put a super Walmart. Juxtaposed. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah, so it's going to be situate, situated um, near the bike path and the, right near, is that the lot right. we're talking about? Way down. Yeah, so yeah. it's not going to be like on South Maple. It's actually yeah. set Right, back. it'll be off, it'll be off uh, South, mm -hmm. South Maple. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, people will be able to see it, but uh, uh, it will Anyways, so uh, th th that project seems to be going forward. Uh, it, Massachusetts uh, general law allows for solar developers to approach town for um, a alternative tax program called a payment in lieu of taxes or pilot. Uh, and we have negotiated five of these already with other solar developers, including two projects with Nexam off of Mill Valley Road. Uh, we've always approached this from the point of view that uh, both sides can win, uh, that the solar developer has a better handle on their cash management, and the Hadley taxpayers will receive more tax money in the long run than they would under a straightforward tax taxation program. So if this is in 61A now, this property is in 61A because it's farmland, right. it's a significantly greater amount of money that we'll be receiving from the pilot than we would be under if it was A&R land, right? Right. We have some estimates that uh, the 2.6 megawatt uh, parcel would receive about $90,000 more in tax money under a pilot agreement than a, with straightforward taxation over in a 20-year period. 20-year period. That's over 20 years. 20 90,000 more. 90,000 more. Where do I sign? And then the other one would be uh, uh, a little less than that. Uh, it's a smaller project, uh, but somewhere in the neighborhood of seventy thousand dollars more in taxation than uh, regular taxation under the pilot agreement. This has to be approved by the selectmen first, by the town meeting next, and then reviewed by the Department of Revenue. So, these are the two that are on. These are town two warrant. on town warrant. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. So moved. Okay. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Every time it's, it shines, we are making money. That's right. <laughs> Let the sun shine in. Yep. Okay, um, select board meeting schedule, May through August. So. First um, and third Wednesdays. Any holidays? July uh, yeah, the July 4th on, not technically on the. Uh, Second week. July 4th, it's not interfering with. <laughs> Okay, well, let's start with the month of May, because May actually has five, count them, five Wednesdays. So we're meeting tonight. Then that would be the 10th, 17th, 24th, and 31st. Let's not get carried away. No, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> defining the calendar. Um, tell her. I would hope that we would be Fair meeting enough. at least three of those, because the other thing is, if we're serious about um, thinking about the work that we have to do between now and fall town meeting. Um, I've, For I've God's <laughs> sakes, we haven't had <laughs> spring town meeting. That's all we talk about here is town meeting. We do. Yeah. But right? the Poor finance committee agree with me here. <laughs> Thank you, finance Drinking, <laughs> drinking the Kool-Aid. That's drinking terrible. Kool right. <laughs> no, Madam Chair, yep. I'm inclined to agree with you 100%. You know, sometime in the near future, we have to have our uh, town uh, finance officer in mm -hmm. and I want to hear something from a neutral person looking at it from a different way yep. 
a tri board, maybe our tri next tri board meeting, mm -hmm. the school is really gearing up for that. Okay. So maybe that and Linda and uh, get a real good picture of what we're up against in 219 before we even think about working on it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure the finance committee wants to know, you know, so. I know we wanted the municipal buildings committee in for a relatively significant conversation. June, yeah, June 6th or 7th, whatever that date is. Do we have that plugged in already so I can? No, you haven't set your schedule, so. I right. I, I mean, I, I have it on my notes to plug it in, but depending on when the schedule is set. So the first Wednesday in June, uh, right. if we, I just want to report back to them tentatively that that's going to be an agenda item meeting for June if that You works. know, and maybe yep. something else for that agenda is to go in depth in the DOR report mm -hmm. to review it. We really just mm -hmm. skimmed over it once and not really got into discussion yep. anything about it. We'll have the audit report by then. That needs yeah. to be reviewed. I mean, I do, so I'm hoping that we can can we just start with may for now so do people want to meet next week no next week so that's the 10th i have a dentist yeah. well, that's a good reason not to be <laughs> <laughs> you won't be able to talk yeah. oh thanks so we've got the 10th 17th 24th and 31st <laughs> david do we have um requests that are queued up that have been pushed off that need Need attention next week? The only thing you know, not next week, but uh, we do have a couple of permits that are uh, for a hearing. We've scheduled them for June 6th. Okay. So what if we do the 17th and the 24th in May? That's good. That good? And then the 31st, we're all going to be marching in the parade, and I'm sure we'll be exhausted, so we can take the 31st off. <laughs> Where's the parade on the 31st? No, it's on that Monday, right? The 29th. No, it's the 28th. We always do it on a Sunday. On Sunday. Yeah. Oh, I just meant that we'll be all be together on parade day. Are you looking at tri board meetings for those days? The 17th and the 24th? Well, we have that's something we need yet. to talk to, to you guys about, too, as to how you want to work with us as we march through the summer projects. I mean, we could also, to Donald's point, we should have formal tri board meetings to involve the schools. But I think that there may be a fair amount of work that you guys want to engage with us on. And if that's the case, maybe there's a standing agenda item for you guys. I mean, if you want to talk about that and sure. propose. And I'd like, I think we should wait for Donald to get back to us. The school has a couple brand new members. There's a lot of institutional yep. knowledge just left that board. And I, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't thank them at some point in time too. But but they're they're getting their feet wet and I'm sure they you know, want a, a meeting or two to get you know, a little understanding to their belts before we set up a tri board with them. Mm -hmm. But I think it's it's imperative that we get a tri board. But maybe the twenty fourth is a better time for that, and let them get a couple meetings in. Okay, so we'll coordinate that with the schools. And then in the month of June, um, the dates are the seventh, fourteenth, twenty first, and twenty eighth. Are any of those Wednesdays really bad for somebody? Seventh what? And twenty first would be the first and third. Okay. Right. And again, we may need to tack on, depending on what we have. Don't get carried away. It's well, summer. I know, but we'll see who's standing up in front of town meeting in the fall then. <laughs> um, so that's June. And then July. Fifth. We've got the 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th. Now, I will tell you, I'm on vacation the week of... The, the 19th, I'm not going to be around. Does Neither it? will I. Okay, so I think if... I'm going on the 5th. You're going on the 5th. Okay, so maybe the 12th and the 26th? Yeah. Sure. Is that good? <coughs> okay. And then we've got August. So that's the 2nd, the 9th. So we want to do the first and the third in August as well. There's five yeah, let's Wednesdays do, let's that do month. Three of them, if you're gonna. Okay. So August is bringing us into gear. Should we? Are you in? Where are you at, David? The last week of August. Yeah. So 16th, I, I hope to be in Sacramento. Okay. So what if we did the second, the ninth, and the twenty-third? Okay. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Hmm? Seven? Seven o'clock. Yep. 
tri-boards are usually at six. Right. The, when we'll, we figure out when the tri-board is, we'll start that one earlier probably. <coughs> David, if you could notify the Municipal Buildings Committee, just send it to uh, David uh, Tudrin for the 7th, and we'll set them up for the yep. joint meeting. Please and thank you. Yes. Okay. And then David and I will work on scheduling the other guests that uh, Donald was referring to that we've talked about as well. And I know that the sub-fire station um, architects and things are going to be wanting to come in to us, too. So okay. if you want to be put on the agenda, I'll let you know when. Okay. We should do those both in cooperation because yeah, Collier, be Collier would be, would be, be here for both of them. Yeah. So mm -hmm. As they're working now together, that would mm -hmm. be pretty good. Okay. Uh, so Memorial Day Parade? Yes, it is. This is just the consent? For I think it's more of a informational, don't you? Mm -hmm. I said consent next to it. That's why I was looking at. I don't know if we had to actually approve something. May 28th. Okay, so that the Hadley Legion is cordially inviting everyone to participate in the Memorial Day Parade, which is on Sunday, May 28th at 2 o'clock. Um, consistent with prior years, the formation time is at 1.15 at the Legion. And... Um, John Kirish uh, is a point of contact for this, as well as Tom Stolarski, the Legion itself, Kathy Zaturka, and Jean Baxter. And uh, presumably we'll be doing the cemeteries and all of that, mm -hmm. right? So um, is everybody able to I participate? Am. Yeah. Yeah, 1045. You driving, Donald? Did they ask you to drive yet? Yeah, drive in March, same time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no. uh, Multitasking. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess they did drilling in that upper lot, David, for the uh, senior center, and there's more holes up there, and they're cleaning it too mm -hmm. now. They're finalizing it, mm -hmm. so I know you're going to have continued talks, you and uh, Marlo, yep. on the finishing product, yep. what it's going to be. Okay. Okay, so we don't need to take any action on that. And by the way, the finance committee is always um, invited to march as well. Bring candy. Yes, you want to bring candy. Hard candies. The only trouble you have to have shirts with a dollar sign on it, so everybody knows what you're there and for. A yeah, <laughs> and a target on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna take the pictures though? Yeah, I know. That's right. Uh, yeah. So, David, is there anything that we didn't touch on in your administrator's report that you feel we need to touch on today? On uh, all town meeting all the time. <laughs> That's what it's been for the last two months. You want this? Is there anything uh, well, in there? Let me just look on yours. Uh, we've we've gone through all of the uh, major parts here. Uh, town meeting. Everybody show up tomorrow, seven o'clock. Uh, Hopkins Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, we need a hundred people. Mother's Club will be there with uh, their earthly delights in the form of baked goods. Uh, and a lot of important business to conduct, 25 articles. Uh, it should be a good time for all of us. You got some dedications we need to speak of, I think, as well, when you're done with your hmm? talking about. I want to make sure we address oh, yeah. the dedications on the yearbook, too. Absolutely. So I think that's it. Okay. I just Dr. have one question. I asked Jen this morning, and she didn't know. <coughs> she didn't have an answer for me. A sign appeared up on the fence for yes. a Northampton church. Yes. And it's supposed to be all Hadley, I thought, only. So I don't think that there's an all Hadley clause to. But I'm saying that could be a can of worms we're opening up. Anybody could come and approach and hang a banner there for any reason. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we're letting Northampton in, a church in Northampton. I'm not against churches, but they're from Northampton. Mm. So I think that creates a problem. It's I a, agree. It's a Polish dinner, and I thought it was the Polish <laughs> dinner for the uh, Most Holy Redeemer. What, which is the picnic but, in the summer. Yeah, but yeah. this is a Polish dinner for St. Valentine's Church in Northampton. Okay. Yeah, we, um, the select board delegated the authority to David, to David for that, So, but we didn't put any parameters around it. So. Right. I mean, I think at this point, the, the banner's up. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not saying to take it down, yeah. but, but, but we should have forward. some yeah. regulations yeah. for the future, I think, to prevent 
you know, everybody I, coming forth and want to hang back. I, I actually don't recall St. Valentine's approaching me, so I mean, it's worth me giving them a call and saying, you know, it'd be nice okay. if you asked before you plunked your sign on our fence. Yeah, see if somebody else gave mm -hmm. the nod. Uh, I, I would like to make a motion that it is dedicated. I don't want to see that mm -hmm. fence turn into a... Uh, you know, a sign yeah, just like for a, anybody else. Yeah, so yeah, so I, I would, I would truly like to set the parameter that that only be utilized for Hadley functions. Let's, if you don't mind, let's confer with Joel tomorrow when he comes, because you know, it just strikes me that there's all sorts of First Amendment issues that we need to pay attention to on our property. I don't. I'm just, I'm just, I just, well, I'd rather, <laughs> rather protect the Hadley taxpayers. Okay. You know, just humor me. Yes, sir. I don't. As long as it's a conversation with Joel in the parking lot on his way over to town meeting and it's not going ka-ching, we're paying for it anyway. Right. Sounds good. Right. Yeah, it's okay. hypothetical. Yeah. yeah, just a hypothetical. <laughs> okay. Um, Joyce, do you have... Oh, I thought you wanted you her wanted to... You wanted to do the... Oh. I'll take Glenn Clark. Okay. Uh, I'll take Rachel. Okay. If you want. Yep. You've worked with... Uh, Marilyn yeah. for yeah. years, you know her quite well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if anybody's ever contacted her daughter to be there to accept it. I don't. I think know. Ray will be there and Glenn Clark will be there. Marilyn's daughter. Yeah. yeah. I think that there was extension made to to have that conversation. I'm not even sure where she lives or anything. Jen, I think, was talking yeah. about it earlier yeah. today. That okay. she made yeah. a contact. She didn't know of whether or not she'd be there. So, but but I think that she did make the contact. Good. Good. Um, and just while we're on the subject of schools, um, Jerry reminded me that we were probably, uh, well, we're not probably, we were remiss um, uh, the evening after the election because we had two very long time town volunteers quietly roll off of their elected uh, seats on the uh, Town of Hadley School Committee. So tonight, just want to extend uh, a heartfelt thanks to Roby Grant and Linda Dunleavy for all of their years of service um, and outstanding service um, uh, to benefit the, uh, the Hadley schools and the town of Hadley. So thank you, Roby and Linda, if you're watching. Here, here. Yeah, thank, mm -hmm. thank you very much. And I also thank them two meetings from the board of selectmen and the townspeople. Great. So they were recognized at their two meetings. The one, they were still there mm -hmm. in the last one on Monday. Good. So it's been done. Good. Donna, we have a, a Warren article regarding HCOG and, and are you able to report back now or is that still? What are we going to say on town meeting tomorrow? Well, I gave David the new information, and we didn't uh, notify the COG in time. We had to notify him by 45 days, which we didn't. And we personally had to notify the executive director within 25 days, which didn't meet the deadline either. So I think all we can do is discuss it like a non-binding referendum, and maybe we could take a vote. And then it's going to be pushed off to the fall. Do we want if the townspeople want to do that? Do we even want to do that, or do we just want to pass over it until the fall? Oh, well, it's up to the board. You know. Do you think already. anything will be clarified by the fall? I mean, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to bring a, a sullied light to this, especially if the changes are going to be made over there. And I don't want people with a poor taste in their mouth the way it's kind of in a rough. It's a rough place to be right now, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to get hopefully corrected or rectified. Well, I guess the biggest issue, Jerry, is we had a straw vote. Uh, I'm not going to say what it is, but they have one asset left because of executive sessions again. And the straw vote was to sell that asset. And so then there's no other revenues to provide for $600,000 a year that they have to come up with. In 10 years, five years, they're relocating the courthouses. In 10 years, they're closing Superior Court, which is gonna leave the building as a mu museum, which someone has to pay for. Mm -hmm. And they've been getting 125,000 a year from the state to operate the courthouse, which mm -hmm. includes payment for the whole building of electricity, uh, heating, and custodial. And they've blown through that money like Grant took Richmond. They have none of that money left. That's why they're asking CPA funds to upgrade the building. So here's a question though. I mean, I think, I mean, what I'd like to see happen is 
I mean, clearly the cog can't continue to function the way it is right now, to, to the description you just provided. But are we better off having a seat at the table when we try to figure out what the solution should be? So, I mean, my druthers is rather than just pulling out, um, I mean, I'd, I'd like to be at that table and go back to the legislative team and figure out how to make this work. And making it work may mean merging it with the FERC cog or, or something the, else. The but. other thing, Madam Chair, even if we voted to pull out in uh, the fall town meeting, mm -hmm. it takes one year before you can get out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you are allowed to still have a member and that member can vote, mm -hmm. but he cannot vote on the budget. Okay. So we'd still have we'll representation. Still be at the table. Yeah. So it changed in 1999 when they went from a commission to council of government, mm -hmm. and their charter is very complicated now, and how funding and how you vote, and you know, it wasn't like when the commission was everything was cut and dry. Mm -hmm. and today it's a it's like anything you do today, it's all legality. Right. All right, so we okay. look forward to hearing something. Okay, anything else this evening? Any other announcements? Town meeting tomorrow night. Did Every we time that we mention it, at 7 o'clock, we do need quorum. It's a good time. If you have never been before, show up. 100 people, come on out and have yep. fun. You don't know what you're missing. It, they tried to reduce it a couple of years ago, but oh, it, it, didn't, it didn't go over well. You, yeah. you, you get a piece of paper to vote, too. I think I remember that. <laughs> we don't want to talk about that anymore. Yeah. So so I'm be let like, it go. Oh, shit, I'm not yet. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Motion every, to adjourn. Well, everybody's explained your responsibilities for tomorrow night and what we need done and everything like that, right? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody.